It was four at midnight when my lovely grandmother went inside my room and found me reading my piles and piles of notes. The first few months that I started reviewing for my licensure exam were tough because she would always scold me for staying late at night. And by staying late, it means 4 5 a.m. But later she understood the weight of my upcoming exams. She knew how much I put importance into this because it will determine my lifelong dream. That is why she supported me and took care of me. I am so forever grateful to my grandmother for all the sacrifices she did for me. She was my rock and cornerstone. She was the only person who stood by me when my own family neglected me. She never left my side and took me in her arms and gave me the life that I deserve. That is why I am doing my best to top the licensure exam to give both of us a better life. To make the story known to everyone, I am Leah and I have a twin brother named Oliver. My parents never expected to have a twin. They always wanted an only child that is a boy. They were certain of the gender of their baby and thought of it to be male. So when my mother was still pregnant, she already bought male clothes and things with the hopes that her baby is a boy. But when they knew that she was expecting fraternal twins, both boy and girl, my dad and her were so furious. They don't like the idea of having me as a plus one. My mother was always vocal about her hatred towards me as well as my father. When we were out in the world, my nannies would always tell me that all of my parents' attention was focused on my brother. I was the only one who got a babysitter because it was my mother who was so hands-on in taking care of my brother. I was rejected as a child and I hold that trauma until now. My parents would treat me less. They won't allow me to join family dinners, trips, vacations and celebrations. It seems like I was an outcast. The worst part is that my brother was my main bully. He was considered to be gifted and a prodigy by my parents because he was so smart for his age. At seven years old, he was able to do advanced math and higher science. Hence, my parents took pride in it. They were so proud of my brother's achievements and they would even compare me to him. They would straight up say to my face that I am useless and dumb and that my brother was perfect and the best child they could have ever wished for. My brother joined many contests and received prestigious merits and awards for being an achiever. I also told my parents that I wanted to have the same opportunity, but they would never let me. They only told me that I will only become an embarrassment to the family, but little did they know that I was smarter and more capable than Oliver. All the awards that he received were because of me. I was the one who answered most of his assignments. He forced me to do all his modules and even forced me to tutor him. And the worst part is, I was the one who joined the online contest where he was recognized and awarded internationally. I could still remember how he insulted and belittled me. Leah, you're so pathetic. I can't believe we're even related, but since you're practically useless, you better do my assignments or else. Those words were so easy to just come out of his mouth as if I am not his twin. He would just insult me now and then. So every time he would hit me with these insults, I tried to stand my ground. Stop bullying me, Oliver. I won't let you manipulate me anymore. He sneered and mocked me with a loud and annoying laugh. Oh, look, <laughs> the little crybaby is trying to talk back. Who would listen to you anyway? You're nothing but a burden. I held back my tears, controlling them from falling. I, I won't let you bring me down. I, I'm better than this. He leaned in to me with a sinister look. You are delusional if you think you're worth anything. Mom and Dad were right about you. They regret having you as their child and yes, 
I prefer to be an only child. I was so hurt by his words. He's supposed to be my twin, my other half. But why is he like this? That's not true. They have me because they saw my potential something you will never understand. Potential? Oh, please. You're just a second-rate sibling living off their pity. Do my assignment now, and maybe I will tell everyone what a loser you are. Every time my mind took me back to that exact moment, it hurt me so badly. He even humiliated me in school and disowned me as his twin. On top of that, he would take all the credit for everything that I did for him. Inside the classroom, everyone would praise him for getting high scores on the assignment and he would threaten me whenever I get the same scores as him. That's why he told me to intentionally put the wrong answers. I wanted to go against him, but I don't want him to hurt me again. Moreover, during family gatherings, in front of our relatives, he was always the star of the show. My parents would intentionally neglect me and put all their attention to Oliver. Oliver, you're such a bright young man, always excelling in everything you do. Before he could answer our relative, he looked at me and flashed a smirk. Thanks, it's not hard when you're naturally born smart and I believe that my twin couldn't relate to that. My mother chuckled as if Oliver said something funny. Of course, I can excel as well. You know that all too well, Oliver. He rolled his eyes at me. My parents gave me a sharp look because it was my first time talking back. Oh, here we go again. Miss know it all trying to stand up all for herself. Face it, Leah, you'll always be beneath me. Maybe in your twisted world, but not in reality, I am worth more than the lies you tell everyone. I could feel his anger as he heard those words come out of my mouth. He looked at my parents for help and my father stood up and pointed at me. You're a stupid daughter. Stop shaming your brother with those filthy words of yours. Can't you see that he is smart and successful? Unlike you, who has nothing but a headache. I could feel all eyes staring at me, judging me. My tears are forming gradually in my eyes. I wonder if you are truly my daughter. Just look at you. You're a jealous child. You would do everything just to bring your brother down. If you only use all that energy on your studies, then you would be useless. My heart broke a thousand times that night. I couldn't hold back my tears anymore, and everyone was looking at me, judging me intensely, until a familiar hand hugged me from behind and dragged me away from that scene. I won't let all of you ruin the life of my granddaughter. If you don't accept her as your child, then fine, I'll raise her by myself, away from all of your evilness. Then my grandmother brought me to her house in the province. Our life was simple and peaceful. In the province, I was able to express myself and my gifts. I was recognized for my intelligence and talents, and people appreciated me for who I am. I am so grateful to my grandmother for raising me well. We cut off all connections with my parents and I never received any inch of financial support from them. So my grandmother worked tirelessly just to support me through my college. That is why I must do my best to pass this exam to give back to her. I just finished my chemical engineering degree and in three days, it is going to be my licensure exam. The next day, I was preparing my luggage because I'm going to the city to take the exam and I have to arrive there a day or two early. My grandmother wished me goodbye and good luck. As soon as I arrived in the city, the familiar traumas of my childhood came back but this time I am more resilient and strong to face whatever comes my way. I have a day left to study. So, I headed to the local library to take the time to scan my notes and familiarize the topics that I find difficult. But fate will truly make a way. 
Coincidentally, I bumped into my brother Oliver in the library. He was dumbfounded when he recognized me. His eyes widened as if he saw a ghost. As I stood before my twin brother, after two long decades of separation, a rush of mixed emotions flooded my heart. The wounds of the past resurfaced, but they were now accompanied by a newfound sense of strength and purpose. I had endured years of neglect and emotional abuse, all because my parents adored my brother's supposed brilliance while dismissing my intelligence. Little did they know that Oliver was manipulating me all along, using me as a pawn to further his success and until now, they don't know the truth yet. My trauma really left a scar in me and seeing Oliver right now triggered it. As children, my parents' favoritism for Oliver was evident from the beginning and he wasted no time in taking advantage of their bias. He knew I was smarter but he used my knowledge and hard work to mask his shortcomings. I am just so glad that grandmother saw through his pretense and adopted me, offering the love and support I so desperately craved. Under her care, I flourished and honed my talents, excelling in academics and making a name for myself. Now, 20 years later, we met again. Le Le Leo, what, what are you doing here? He asked with a shaky tone. Uh, I'm here to take my chemical engineering licensure exam. I responded to him with full confidence. I knew that I had become a formidable force to be reckoned with. Well, Oliver, unbeknownst to him, was about to face the full burnt of my revenge, yes. I have been planning my revenge all this time, and I didn't know that it was going to be this early and easy. His eyes lit up as he heard my reply. What a coincidence! Oh, I'm taking chemical engineering too. I guess we are both taking the exam. I was shocked to know that. I guess we're twins. We have the same interest. Then, the next thing he said shocked my entire world. D uh, do you know uh, that the exam has uh, two batches, right? I can do the last batch while you can do uh, the first. Uh, and um, I want you to record the answer and give it to me. Our parents will be so proud to know that we passed the exam together. I wanted to slap him so badly at that moment. Imagine, after 20 years, and we just had a one-minute conversation, and the first thing he did was to manipulate me again? I wanted to slap him just to let him remember what he did to me. It seems like he forgot everything that just happened 20 years ago. I couldn't believe the audacity of his request. He was still underestimating me, blinded by his arrogance and entitlement. But I remember my revenge plan. A mischievous smile played on my lips as I agreed to his request, secretly planning to turn the tables on him. Instead of aiding his deceit, I fed him elaborate lies convincing him that he was getting the real answers. Unbeknownst to him, each response was carefully crafted to lead him astray ensuring his imminent failure. In short, I gave him the wrong answers. The day of the exam arrived and I knew that my revenge was about to unfold. The anticipation was almost as sweet as the victory I could taste. As he emerged from the exam room, I pretended to be the supportive sister, all the while relishing the knowledge of his impending humiliation. When the results were declared, my heart raced with excitement. Oliver's face turned pale as he discovered that he had failed miserably. The shock and disbelief in his eyes were a balm for the wounds of my past. It was only the beginning. I couldn't resist confronting our parents revealing the truth they had ignored for far too long. Their astonishment at my academic success and Oliver's failure was apparent and I seized the opportunity to lay bare his deceit. I recounted the countless times he had used me to cheat and how he had taken credit for my work and ideas. The room was filled with an awkward silence as the truth hung 
heavily in the air. My parents were mortified and I could see the regret in their eyes. They realized the grave mistake they had made by neglecting me and underestimating my capabilities. At that moment I knew that their apologies were empty gestures. My revenge was not merely to embarrass Oliver, but to demonstrate that I was no longer bound by their judgments. As the years passed, I continued to thrive, further surpassing Oliver in every aspect of life. I became a successful chemical engineer, earning accolades and recognition. But my true triumph lay in the realization that I didn't need validation from those who had once abandoned me. I surrounded myself with people who appreciated and respected me for who I was. My grandmother's love had taught me the value of genuine connections, and I cherished the family I had chosen for myself. My revenge was not an act of destruction but of growth and empowerment. Oliver's humiliation was just a consequence of his actions. I didn't need to stoop to his level. Life had already served justice on a silver platter. As I look back on my journey, I am grateful for the hardships I endured. They shaped me into the strong, resilient woman I am today. I have embraced my past, but I no longer carry the weight of it on my shoulders. My heart is filled with compassion for my brother, for he will forever be haunted by the consequences of his actions. Meanwhile, I soar high, free from the shackles of my past, embracing a future filled with endless possibilities. In the aftermath of Oliver's humiliation, the reverberations of my revenge spread far and wide. Word quickly spread about his deceit and manipulation, tarnishing his reputation and leaving him with no place to hide. The very people who had once praised him now looked at him with disdain, unable to fathom the depths of his deception. Oliver's world crumbled around him as he faced the consequences of his actions. His academic dreams shattered, his friends turned their backs on him, and even our parents finally awakened to the truth were filled with remorse for their complicity in his scheme. But my revenge was not solely focused on causing him public humiliation. It was a personal transformation, an elevation of my self-worth and an assertion of my rightful place in the world. I no longer needed to prove my intelligence or seek validation from those who had discounted me for so long. As I continued to excel in my career, my accomplishments soared to new heights. I became a prominent figure in the field of chemical engineering, delivering groundbreaking research and innovative solutions that garnered international recognition. I was sought after by prestigious organizations, invited to speak at conferences, and offered lucrative opportunities that surpassed even Oliver's wildest dreams. The stark contrast between our paths was a constant reminder of the strength I had cultivated within myself. Oliver, once the golden child, had become a cautionary tale, a symbol of deceit and the consequences that come with underestimating others. But even as I reveled in my success, a part of me couldn't help but feel a tinge of sadness for what could have been. I had once yearned for my parents' love and approval, and now that they understood the truth, their regret was palpable. They reached out, attempting to mend the fractured relationship, but I found it difficult to fully forgive and forget. The journey of revenge transformed me from a wounded and neglected child into a resilient and empowered woman. I had found solace in the love of my chosen family, those who had embraced and celebrated me for who I truly was. Their unwavering support served as a constant reminder that I was more than the sum of my past experiences. As the years passed, I continued to thrive, not just in my career, but in all aspects of my life. I cultivated meaningful relationships, pursued passions outside of work, and made a difference in the lives of others. The legacy I had built was one of resilience, authenticity, and personal growth. Oliver, on the other hand, struggled to find his footing in a world that had turned its back on him. 
The weight of his actions bore down on him, a constant reminder of the consequences he would forever face. His fall from grace was a stark reminder to those who underestimated the power of the neglected and the determination of the underestimated. My revenge had not been a one-time act of retribution. It had become a lifelong commitment to my happiness and fulfillment. I no longer sought vindication or validation from those who had failed me. Instead, I reveled in the knowledge that I had reclaimed my power, rising above the shadows of the past to become the person I was always meant to be. In the end, my revenge was not solely about humiliating Oliver. It was about reclaiming my worth, proving to myself and the world that I was more than the neglected sibling in the shadow of my twin. I had blossomed into a force to be reckoned with, a testament to the strength that lies within us all. And as I stood tall, gazing at the horizon of possibilities, I knew that my story was not defined by revenge, but by resilience, triumph, and the unwavering spirit of a survivor.